So we've talked about the leading strand. Um, at the origin of replication, helicase attaches, opens the DNA, primase builds a primer, and then DNA polymerase 3 starts building a new DNA strand by matching up bases. So if there is a G on the uh, parental or the uh, parental or template strand, then a C would be added by uh, DNA polymerase, so on and so forth. And we build a new DNA strand in the direction of 5 to 3, and it's following helicase as the helicase is unzipping the DNA. Now, here is where it gets a little bit messy. It's not too hard to understand, but I, I'm going to do my best to explain it to you um, to help you to get this uh, clearly. So, um, the lagging strand. Now, the lagging strand, here's the leading strand. So, let's just focus on the left replication fork here. Here's the origin of repl replication here, and we're unzipping the DNA, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's label the directionality of the parental strands first. Actually, let's label the strand being built. We know strands are always built from 5 to 3, right? That means that the parental strand here is 3 here and 5 here. This one didn't stick. Let me do it again. Okay. And so down here, the new strand being built uh, right here is uh, 3 and right here is 5. And remember, we're, we're drawing a line right here. We're only looking on the left side here. We're not going to worry about the right side. We're worrying about the left side, uh, the replication fork on the left. So helicase is right here. And it's moving in this direction, opening up the DNA. The leading strand is being built by DNA polymerase, and it's following helicase as helicase is opening up the DNA. So helicase is an enzyme. It's made of protein. It's, it's like a little machine that builds DNA, right? Now, there's also DNA polymerase 3 on the lagging strand there. Now, the problem is it can only copy DNA from a 5, and it, or I should say it only builds DNA from a 5 prime to a 3 prime direction. But that's a problem because that's the wrong direction and uh, if, if you're looking at where new DNA is being unzipped, it's, it's being unzipped to the left here. But this molecule can only copy, in this case, to the right. So helicase is moving to the left, but the enzyme that makes do, new DNA can only copy to the right, in this case, because of the direction of the template strand. So it does it in chunks. So right here is the first chunk that was made. This is the second chunk that was made. This is the third chunk that was made. Now, as, D, as more DNA is exposed in this direction, the next fragment will be right here. And then the next fragment after that will be made up here. I'm drawing it on the wrong side, but just so you can see it. And the next one will be made over here, okay? So they'll be made later in pieces as new bits of template DNA are exposed, and then they'll all be glued together in the end. So this is called the lagging strand. It's not really all that slower, I don't think, but it's just made in chunks. And every chunk has its own primer. So primase is priming constantly as this goes along. <clears throat> so we've seen the leading strand, we've talked about that, um, but the lagging strand, as I've numbered here, is made in fragments, and these fragments are known as Okazaki fragments. You'll see that in your book. I might spell it wrong. Okazaki fragments. And you'll see it in type spelled correctly in a moment. Okay, so <clears throat> what happens is we, we have the origin of replication right here. So you don't have to pay attention to anything to the right of that. Um, so we have template strand has been exposed. We build a primer, just like with all DNA replication. So primase, which is an enzyme, comes in, builds a bit of a primer. DNA polymerase attaches, and it builds new DNA until it runs into the origin of replication right here, and then it stops. So it's built a little fragment, right? Yay. Now what? It's built some DNA. Well, meanwhile, more DNA has been opened up, so a new primer is built down here, another piece of DNA is made until it runs into that primer that we've already built, 
And now we've built another fragment. And that happens over and over and over again in little pieces. So this is really easier to see in video form, I think. I'll try to post some videos, but you can Google this all you want. There's a lot of videos out there. But the thing to remember is, you know, here's our original strand of DNA. It's being opened up in this direction. And it's being opened up a little at a time. So down here, it's back together again, right? Helicase hasn't gotten there yet. And one what this let's just say this piece up here is is that's being made is the leading strand and so it's being made in this direction and it's just following that zipper pull right it's following helicase and all is well but the lagging strand because of the fact that dna is anti-parallel the piece down here is running in the opposite direction as the piece up here so it's made in chunks in this direction as new dna is exposed uh, by helicase, it's copied until it runs into the previous fragment. And then the next, as this unzips, the next piece will be made here and so on and so forth. So it's built in the wrong direction in little chunks. Okay. And then they're all going to be glued together. So what happens is DNA, oh, let me, let me step back. Uh, DNA polymerase three, as we've talked about before, makes most of the DNA uh, in these fragments. Okay. Then uh, DNA polymerase 1 comes in. It's another enzyme. And what DNA polymerase 1 does is it removes um, the, the uh, um, primer and replaces it with, D with DNA nucleotides. Remember, the primer was made of RNA. So we get rid of that, we replace it with DNA. And the only issue is the very last piece of the backbone right here is still a gap. There's still a gap there. The enzyme doesn't have the right shape to cause the covalent bond to form in the backbone to glue those two things together. So there's one more enzyme called ligase. Oops, why does it keep doing that? Called ligase that glues that last bit of the backbone together and it glues the Okazaki fragments back together again. Okay, you can see Okazaki spelled right here, Okazaki fragments. It glues them together, and now we have a complete strand of DNA. So you can see that again here, just another drawing. We have, in this case, helicase going to the right. The leading strand always follows helicase. The lagging strand is built in the opposite direction from the direction that helicase is going in. It's built in chunks, and every chunk has a primer. So on an exam, you may have to identify leading and lagging strands. You may need to draw something related to this. So I would practice drawing this until it makes sense. Um, that's all you can do is, is to read it and then manipulate it uh, on paper or in your head until you, you've made sense of it. Now, another thing uh, that happens during DNA replication are errors. Uh, errors are actually quite common when we're pairing up bases. So if we have a G here and we accidentally put an A here, uh, they might kind of stick, but they don't stick really well and it, and, and it could cause an error. So DNA polymerase, uh, both of them, one and two, have a proofreading capability. They check their work just like you should do, right? And then they tend to fix it. Of course, sometimes errors remain like, um, uh, they might put the wrong base in place or DNA might break and they repair it incorrectly. And when that happens and it's not fixed, that can lead uh, to mutations, permanent changes in the DNA. Um, that's what a mutation is, is when DNA is copied incorrectly. And sometimes it's not necessarily an A paired with um, a G. It might be that there was an A here and a G here, and now they accidentally got flipped, and now there's an A over there and a G over here. So that kind of thing is also a mutation. Now, 